welcome to the Expand Your Brand podcast, episode one. I'm your host, Jeff Marone, and joined with me is our other host, Austin Silly. Um, this is super exciting. We're getting episode one off the ground and running, and I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this podcast, and we've gotten a lot of, like... A lot of action. Since yeah. we since we put uh, episode zero up, we've had a lot of inquiries um, for guests to come on, and uh, yeah, I think we're going to... I think this is going to be a pretty big hit. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. I'm super excited too. And, I, and so, I think for this episode, we we have a guest. Uh, we have Brandon Cox coming on. Yeah. He's the general manager here at Vintage Cigar Lounge. He's going to be joining us. But you know, I, I think before we have Brandon join us, I want I want to get into our backgrounds. I want people to get to know us a little bit more, okay. and especially you because you know I talked to Joe on the phone, <laughs> and and thank you Joe for making this happen, and we really appreciate you yes, and. Thank you. And making this podcast happen, but Joe said there's a lot of hype about you being on the show and got a lot of, like a lot of excitement. So obviously, and that's the reason why I wanted to bring you on because you have such a great background, you're a great personality, and we became we became really close over the yeah. over the year, and uh, it's been it's been really cool. So I want to want the listeners to get to know you who might not know who you are or might not know your background. So just give them a little, a little bit about your background. Also. Okay. Um, so I was born and raised. Um, in Rhode Island, uh, Westerly, right where Vintage is, um, their first location. Um, and yeah, just basically have a sports background. Um, grew up playing basketball, um, kind of grew up playing all sports, but basketball really, once I hit around eighth grade, it was just solely basketball. Right, yeah. um, went to went to Westerly, um, played varsity for, for three years, um, ended up having great success um, and then went on to college and played a year at uh, Rhode Island College. We won our conference championship. Um, unfortunately, I just I, I got injured, um, had a pretty bad um, back injury and um, I actually just had my anniversary for that um, a few days ago. So um, it's been, it definitely was a humbling experience. Um, I was gearing up for a conference championship one week and that same week I was told basically that I can't play again right. so yeah. um, and then I, I transitioned into golf and golf has consumed my life the past seven eight years um, I fortunately have gotten pretty good I've put in a lot of a lot of work um, and hopefully have have a lot more success to come um, but I love what we're doing in this space I think that um, we're going to bring a lot of awareness to the surrounding community um, and always always have golf integrated into the into the information that we portray. And uh, I think we have a lot of cool features to, uh, to come. Right, yeah. And it's super exciting, man. And I know when I approached, when Joe and I talked and when Joe brought me on board and he, he mentioned about doing my own podcast, I knew... You were like the first person that popped in my head that I knew I wanted to do a podcast with you just from our conversations. And I think we have both kind of a, like a like mindset on yes. like business ideas and, uh, you know, and working together. And I think it, it was just a no brainer to bring you on. And I know, like I guess that Joe had said, there's a lot of hype about like you being on the show. People are really excited to, to have you on. So I, I'm just I'm really appreciative for you being being the co-host with me on the show. And it's thankful. And I, I think you, you hit it. I think we're about to bring something I think we're also about to bring something a little bit different to our area and our town, but also I think maybe to Rhode Island as well. I agree. I'm, I'm fortunate that you, you guys asked me to be a part of it. Um, I know our first meeting together, um, we went to just grab a coffee and we were there for four or five hours. Yeah, exactly. um, so I think that I, I'm very appreciative for our, our relationship as it's grown to be, and it's, I think it's only going to get stronger. Um, and I think that this is going to be a great hit. Um, and like you said, like you said in our first meeting, I think expand your brand is the perfect uh, name for this podcast because we're here to help the community, um, golf pros in the area, superintendents, any of our guests um, expand their personal brand, expand. We're here to expand Vintage Cigar Lounge, make it known, um, promote it, and especially in the area, I feel like we have a lot of assets in this community that will will have guests from those different assets be able to um, 
kind of just promote their business as well and, and bring awareness to the area because um, it is a great town. I think that we have a lot of different variables that come into play. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. I, I can't wait. I think the features that we have going forward are going to be super cool. Yeah, it's su it's super exciting. I think we're going to do some things that are going to be a lot of fun too on the show and as well as just bringing on guests. And I think I think we've, we've I know you have um, gotten a lot of people reach out to you that want to be a guest on the show and we'll, we'll get you guys on. We yeah, promise. Yeah. <laughs> we just, we just got to get episode one out of the way first, yeah. which, is, which we're doing now. And um, yeah, and I think it's it's going to be cool what we have coming up. And like we said, we're going to dip into, we're going to do some golf stuff. We're going to dip into um, some gambling, and we're going to we're going to dip into business with people as well too. And I think it's it's going to be something that's cool. And we're we're here to expand people's brand and our brand as well too. I think this is what we're here to do. And I, I think it's just super exciting to get out there. Yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. and I think I'll, I'll jump into my background real quick too of what I've done. And I, yep. I think I don't have a highly First of all, also, you, you didn't say it, but I'll say it for you. Congratulations, Hall of Fame, for uh, here and, and at our high school and also all century team? What is it for? Or? It's uh, all um, all 100th anniversary team at Rick. Um, so hopefully in the future I'll be able to get into their Hall of Fame. Um, I, I'm very just honored to be a part of the Hall of Fame at Westerly and also a part of the all 100th anniversary team. Um, I never, I never played sports for the accolades. I always played to win and to compete, yeah. and um, I just, I, I kind of go into things a hundred percent. And I don't, I don't have like an off button, yeah. which yeah. is good and bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I appreciate it. It's been super cool. I found out about a month ago about that. So um, about both things actually within two days of each other. So. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that and um, looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, we're su super happy, super happy for you and that. And you know, obviously, I, I, I caught some one of one of your games in high school, and it was a glimpse. Of, uh, real quick, I was coaching at the time, so I didn't have much time to jump over. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Austin's a hell of an athlete, and I, a hell of a golfer too. And I can't wait to get, do some encore stuff because you can. Kick my butt. <laughs> try to try to keep it PG. We'll um, we'll keep it we'll keep it competitive though. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, we'll come up with some sort yeah, of yeah, handicap yeah, system. Might have to give me like thirty strokes, but <laughs> we'll, be, right. we'll be all right. But uh, yeah, and I, I think too for people who don't know me, and I, I think a little bit different out in the, the golf news RI stuff. Um, I, I'm a I, I was a podcaster. I, I played sports, but unfortunately didn't. You know, I had, I had bad migraines growing up, so I was able to like really dip into the sports world. But I always loved sports and um, being able to. I've done some podcasts. I've done some pretty cool background things. I've coached basketball for 10, 10 years. Yep. I've worked with some some like pro athletes and some like worked around some top college players, like women college players, and some you know top one hundred college players out, out in Dallas. So it's like down there, and then. Um, started my own podcast. I did the Road to Run Back, and which was a very successful hit. Yeah, successful hit. I, I got I got lucky, and I, I was able to interview some some pros there, some professional athletes. Um, I got to work with Michael Carter Williams and a little bit of Cole Anthony over the summer, this past summer. So some cool things I got, in a, and, and I'm just like looking to. I think just I love doing it. I love getting out there and meeting people. But I think this is something a little bit different because it's. Um, I get to have a co-host. I, I, I get to we get to interview people around the town. I, I think and yes. play some golf, and golf is a big passion of mine. I love cigars too, so yes. this is going to be super exciting to get this this podcast out. It is. It's yeah. such a good mesh of yeah. of everything coming together. Yeah. Um, community sports. Um, we're definitely going to hit on betting because it's yeah. it's definitely a, a major topic in the sports world nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, right, so. Um, yeah, I think, and and I also want to say congratulations on the roadie run back because that was, I was on that first, right, and yeah. I was watching that from a side, and I was like, wow, when we first met, I wanted to get my imprint on a on a podcast as well, and I'm fortunate that you allowed yeah. me to do that with this. Of course, yeah, yeah, of course, I wouldn't have it any other way. So I think, and uh, yeah, no, we'll get into it. we'll talk some sports now. I, I think. Uh, you know, speaking of betting, I don't know if anyone picked TCU, but I'm sorry if you bet on TCU in the college playoff. Oh my God, I haven't seen. 
I don't know. I, so I'm a Michigan fan, so obviously it was it was tough. New Year's Eve was a tough night for oh, me. Yeah. Uh, there was a video out there, but we will keep it. <laughs> uh, but New Year's Eve was a tough night for me, and I think Michigan kind of beat themselves in that. But TCU, I think, also played the perfect game to to win to to beat Michigan as well too. And I think yeah. it was a combination of both. But did you think when Georgia and TCU played, do you think it would have been a 65-7? Win? Um, I. I... I definitely did not think that, but at the same time, I think that the the college football playoff format is very flawed. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, Alabama had what two two losses this year, yeah. but like realistically, it should be Alabama Georgia almost every year. Um, I, I think that obviously Michigan had a great year, but at the same time, like uh, hopefully they expand the playoffs. I think that might even it out a touch um but georgia's just a powerhouse yeah, yeah georgia's like, like i think everyone is kind of saying it now it's like georgia's the new standard the alabama like or yeah. what yeah or like because they're just so dominant and they're bringing in and the the cool thing i think one of the, the things that was cool is that they had those freshmen play yep. they had their freshmen playing in the fourth quarter which given them experience on a big stage and stuff yep. like that i know you're up 65 or whatever like seven so like it's they got their guys playing time. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Stenson, uh, Stenson Bennett, yeah. I mean, what an unbelievable story. Right, He right. went to Georgia, walked on, transferred out to a junior college, yeah. went back to Georgia, and then led his team to two national championships. Like, that's sports in in itself. Like, that's exactly how it should be. You know? Yes. I think they were all talking about TCU being the biggest underdog story, but... Honestly, Stenson Bennett's the biggest underdog story in that, in that sure. whole situation. And what he was able to do for his team and being able. And it was funny because I think last year when they won it, he wasn't even supposed to be the starter. It was supposed to be the kid from Cal at JT Daniels from right. Cal California. And I think he went to West Virginia or something like that. Or yeah, yeah. But it works. It's that's, that's just life for you. That's how sports happen, and that's that's where it goes, and, uh, goes into it. And then we had the NFL playoffs starting. It won't be able to... Hit, we were filming on Saturday, so we won't, this is the first day of the playoffs. So we're not going to hit too much in the bidding because it's kind of kind of go on the pass. But yeah, maybe Austin, I can get your Super Bowl prediction out of that, though. Um, oof. I don't know. I mean, my Patriots were uh, <laughs> they were rough to watch this year. Um, I'm actually I'm hoping that they get um, the Cardinals head coach as their offensive coordinator. I think that will be. Um, Kingsbury, I think that would be awesome um, in the future because I, although I do love Matt Patricia and they're saying Gerard Mayo might do a little offense coordinator, I don't think defensive players should be offense coordinators. I just don't think right. it meshes. Yeah. Um, and then to go off of that, I, I wish and, and hope Tom Brady has success because um, obviously we grew up watching him and he's been dominant. Um, and I don't think that he still is getting the credit that he deserves uh, for how old he is. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but I, I think um, I think it's going to be the 49ers in the in the Super Bowl, and honestly, I I think it's going to be 49ers Cincinnati. That's that's actually what was my prediction as well too. I'm a yeah. 49ers fan, so okay. like for them to. I don't know, go through two quarterbacks this year, and then their, their third string, who's Mr. Irrelevant in the draft, just play. I mean, they're playing well. Their defense is playing unbelievable. And then Cincinnati's is a hot. They're hot. They're, they're just coming in like they did last year, too. Yeah, Joe yeah. Burrow is unbelievable. Yeah. So it's, I think he's a quarterback that's going to be, if he stays healthy with everything, I think he's a quarterback that's going to do for greatness in the league yes. for, for a long time. Yes, for yeah. sure. I mean, the – the AFC is so tough though because you have Josh Allen, you have Patrick Mahomes, yeah. Joe Burrow. Like, uh, it's definitely going to come down to one of those three right. in the Super Bowl. Yeah, right. It just kind of depends on who runs into who at the, at one time, you right. know. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, that, what happened with the Bills with with Hamlin? I like shout out to him. I mean, he's been recovering greatly yeah. and hopefully we can see him on the field again that was um such a tragedy Terrifying. um but i mean hopefully 
I, I think they're going to have a lot behind them in this whole run as well um, on behalf of him. So uh, I think they're going to be very tough to beat as well. So it, it, the AFC is going to be tough. I think the, the Eagles and 49ers are going to run, run into each other in yeah, the NFC Championship. Good, yeah. Um, but I just, I think the 49ers just, I mean, adding Christian McCaffrey, yeah, Jesus, he's unbelievable. Yeah. And it, it's a Shannon, it's perfect for Shannon's offense because he loves to run the ball. And, like, he's taken running backs that have kind of been guys that were undrafted or guys that haven't really gotten an opportunity to play, take them and turn them into superstars. And then when you already have a superstar in, uh, in McCaffrey already, I mean, yeah. they just... They use him in different ways. He's throwing the ball. He's running. He's a wide receiver. So I think they're just they're set up for something great, and it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. But I'm with you. I think it's going to be 49ers, Bengals, and so I think so. There's a rematch. I can't remember the name of the Super Bowl. I think it was like in the 80s, but that's a rematch when the Super Bowl was in the yeah, 80s yeah. or something. But I think that I, I think yeah I, I think they're the two hottest teams. Right, right. And then I think uh, we'll touch upon a couple more sports topics, and then we'll we'll get to our guest. Um, but I want to ask you, PGA events. We've got some PGA Tour events coming up. we got yeah. the Waste Management, I think, which is the big one up in Phoenix. It's coming yeah, yeah. up in, on February 9th. Yes. Um, and what's what's the event that you're looking forward to the most? You know? um, I mean, I love, like, coming from the basketball court and, and playing basketball, I love the stadium atmosphere. So yeah. the Waste Management is, is – it brings a different feel to golf, and I think that's – I think golf is heading in that direction. Right. Um, I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't need to be like a hoity-toity sport. I think it's becoming more athletic, becoming more of um, of like a sports sporting venue. Right. Um, so I, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And I mean, obviously the Masters, like right. that is just. I, I don't think it gets any better than that week um, to kick off the the actual like season. Yeah. But. Um, I mean, in Hawaii, it, it looks awesome the, last week and this week. Yeah. Um, they're going to do the West, Cor- Co- uh, West Coast swing um, coming up and then the Florida swing and then head into, head into Augusta. So it should be a great um, kickoff to the year. I think there's so many more um, – there's, there's so many players that can win on a week-in and week-out basis that – um, I think it should be great, but yeah, the waste management is always just a fun week, yeah. and then it's Super Bowl week as well. Yeah, perfect. you know, so it's for a sports fan, it's perfect. And and then I think also on top, like to add on to the sports fan aspect of it, the Masters, I call that like I think a lot of people call it the best week because you have the NCAA tournament final, yeah. and then you have right up after it is the Masters that yeah. Thursday and that Friday and everything, and then it's super exciting to get that and I know you and I will definitely hit the, the gambling on, on that aspect of everything coming up for the, the golf weeks and the big tournaments and stuff like that and yes. I think that thing will be big and then as well as too is March Madness we'll definitely we'll open up a bracket to you guys too I think that would be a cool aspect yeah I think I think a bracket for March Madness will be awesome and then also like um, running a football square through yeah. for the Super Bowl yep. um, and then yeah like I, I feel like each guest we bring on, we, we can we can ask them kind of what th- their sports background as well, and also what what they're thinking as far as the PJ Tour, what week they're on, and who they think is going to win, um, and get into betting in there as well. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be cool, and I think we're gonna have a cool aspect to the show, and with a lot of guests. And I know, like you said, you're getting a lot of people reach out. You were texting me as soon as episode zero came out. It was like yeah. you were texting me like every day, like this so and so wants to go on, so and then we get getting messages on Facebook. So we're gonna have a lot of fun, I think. And I think we'll our guests too will have them pick some people too, and you know some picks, and if they're into it, and we'll have some fun with it. And um, yeah, I think this will be good, good, good podcast. Yeah, it's super. It's, 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 it's a, a super, super calm, calm demeanor, demeanor, you know. Yeah, like you it, know, it's not uptight. It's very laid back, and yeah. and I think. Um, I, I mean, I, like we're not on script, obviously, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's it'll be kind of free flowing, which is nice, and um, it's just a time to relax and, and get some insight with with our different guests and give our viewers insight um, in in the golf world. I think um, so. Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. All right, uh, let's kick it to our interview with Brandon, yeah. and it'll be a lot of fun too. Before we get into our interview, a quick word from our sponsor. 
Welcome to Vintage Cigar Lounge. The place where you escape to, not from. The place where your cigar options are limitless. The place where friends come together and bond over the finest cigars and drinks. The place where your selected few can retreat to and enjoy premium cigars, great conversation, and your liquor of choice within the privacy of our private rooms. Looking for a place to escape to? Our doors are always open. All right, on our very first episode, and obviously our very special guest is Brendan Cox. He is the general manager here at Vintage Cigar Lounge down in uh, Westerly. How's it going? It's good. Good, man. How you guys doing? Good, good. We're super excited. Yeah. Yep. Welcome super, aboard. Yeah, we're super yeah. excited to have you on the podcast. This is a very first episode, but obviously a very special one because we have a sponsor. You're our sponsor, and you're yeah. we're shooting out of, out of uh, the Vintage Cigar Lounge. So very exciting. So. Yeah, I mean, we're we're super stoked to have you guys. Really pumped to sponsor you guys for the year, and like looking forward to doing some stuff every week. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna be really exciting. I love cigars, and we awesome love cigars. And yeah, um, for sure. And I what's think, uh, what are you smoking on right now? Actually, uh, I have the Kristoff. What how about yourself? All right, I got the Fat Bottom Betty. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually smoking our shop exclusive, the Tienda Exclusiva from Herrera Esteli. Oh, nice. Yeah, Drew Estate okay. makes that for us. That's so, awesome. Yeah, one of the few distinguished ones that get to do it so it's pretty cool very good very is that good. like a light smoke or what is it's that? it's medium it's like a medium all day yeah you know, it's got a nice kind of earthy sort of dark chocolate uh you know flavor profile going on nice. but you can smoke it any time of the day you know? that's, that's awesome what yeah. would you pair that with i mean obviously my coffee <laughs> you know um Coffee, I feel like that's that's the great equalizer when it comes to like all forms of tobacco, you know, yeah. whether it's a pipe, cigar, whatever. Um, but this one pairs well with so much stuff up there. All the bourbons, like whether you drink a neat on the rocks, whatever. Like um, one of the goals that we were trying to get when Greg was working with Willie Herrera was to just get a good all around smoke that everybody can enjoy with whatever they want to do, whatever yeah. time of day, you know. Yeah, that's so. awesome. Yeah, that's great. So uh, I think for our listeners, they, you know, we have we have listeners across the state of Rhode Island, and you know, we're here in Westerly at, at one of your locations. You have another location, right. in Charlestown. Um, can you give like the listeners a little bit of the background about the Vintage Cigar Lounge and whatever what it's all about? Yeah. So Vintage opened almost seven years ago this summer. Um, Greg, Jesse, and Tom all got together. Uh, it was a dream of all theirs, I think, to own and run a cigar lounge. Uh, they saw a empty kind of niche. There was nothing like that down here. You yeah. had them up in Providence and you know those areas, but uh, down in Southern Rhode Island, we didn't really have anything down here. Yeah. So um, they all got together, settled on this spot, and uh, put in a lot of work here. There was a lot of stuff that they redid. Um, and you know, from there, they just, you know, we've taken off. We have a second location in Charlestown um, that's above the Breachway Grill over there, um, and yeah, so, you know, it's a pretty fun spot, and we try to be one of those places where, you know, sometimes cigar lounges, depending on where you are, it can feel like it's kind of an exclusive thing, where you walk in, and you feel like, oh, I'm not, I'm not dressed the right way, or I'm not, like, the right kind of clientele that they're looking for, but, um, you know, we try to keep it accessible for everybody. Yeah. You know, so anybody can come in here and have a premium experience, regardless of their cigar experience, their lounge experience, stuff like that. So, it's awesome. yeah. Really good. yeah. Um, so you guys have memberships, right? Yeah, we do. Us a little information on those. Yeah. So we have three different tiers of memberships. Um, you can find out pricing when you come in, but yep. we have a single membership, double, and a corporate. So a single membership is like if you signed up, you and a guest could come in. Um, get 10% off your drinks, 10% off your individual cigars, 20% off if you want to buy a whole box of something. Okay. Uh, double membership is two people and a guest each, and that also gets you a locker in the back. So what we do is we sign up two people at once for a double membership. You guys share a locker, obviously. Probably want to bring in a friend that yeah. you're going to be sharing, yeah. you know, putting your stashing your cigars in there with. Um, and then we have corporate memberships where 
uh, up to 10 people can come in and get all of the same discounts. Gotcha. So, okay. you know, cool. good for businesses that want to have, since we do have a conference room um, and a lot of, you know, a private lounge in the back, it's good for businesses that want to consistently come in and have like offsite things and meetings yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. How would you say that the membership is like broken down? How it's broken down? As far as what, what percentage is first tier? Or mm. second tier corporate. You know, we have more single memberships than we do anything else. Yep. Uh, a lot of people just find that, you know, it's hard sometimes to find somebody that's going to consistently come in with you and go in on uh, the price of a locker. While we keep it really affordable, um, you know, it's pretty, pretty much like single memberships are what we have a lot of. Okay. Uh, we do have a lot of double memberships as well, and we have quite a few corporate accounts yeah. too. So I would say like single, double, corporate. You know, it's how we right now it breaks down. Right. Awesome. Yeah, my dad and I are a double yeah. membership, and we love it. We come down here during March Madness. Mm -hmm. We'll just like post up in the back with like a right. cousin, one of our, a couple of our cousins that are also members, and we'll just grab pizza, which you can bring bring your own food in here too, right? Absolutely, yeah. 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 As long as, as, yeah, as, long as, as, long as I'm not cleaning up tacos all over the place, you know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah exactly. But that's, that's always good. I've seen you and your dad wilding out back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially during March Madness. That's, yep. the, that's the time it gets a little crazy. Oh, yep. Christmas Eve, you got a little crazy, too. But mm -hmm. <laughs> he was, he had to come back for him. But yep. <laughs> I want to know, too, how did you get into the cigar world, though? Like, what made you get into cigars? So, it's funny. I... I got into pipes first. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I've been smoking pipes for 17 years and cigars for about 16 years. Yeah. Um, and I got into that because my grandfather was a pipe smoker. So I have you know fond memories of him. I would always, I would say at least four times a year, just fib my way out of school by being <laughs> sick, right? <laughs> because my grandfather lived behind the elementary school. So he would come pick me up and uh, bring me to his apartment, and he was always smoking a pipe in there. So like, I just have fond memories of him just like smoking a pipe, making me a sandwich, and watching old war movies, and That's you know, answer. hanging out with my grandfather. So once I got to about like 20, there was a local uh, pipe and cigar shop near me where I used to live, and I went in there and was just feeling nostalgic, and was like, oh. That was a cool thing that I liked that my grandfather did. Yeah. So I got set up with that. Um, had a lot of trial and error, as most pipe smokers do when they start <laughs> out. Um, and through going in there and kind of having... I was lucky, that shop, and that's what we try to do here. Like, that shop mentored me. Yeah. You know, they didn't make me feel awkward yeah, about yeah. being a new, you know, like, tobacco enthusiast. Yeah, right, right. Right? And even all the, now that I look back on it, all the bad choices that I made, they were like, oh, yeah, you know, that's cool. Like, the, nobody made me feel bad about yeah, smoking yeah. this or that um, or having this really dumb, uneducated opinion about <laughs> certain yeah. tobaccos. You're right. Yeah. So just through hanging out there with those guys, naturally, I just started trying cigars, too. And, I mean, the first cigar that I smoked, I remember, is, was an acid blondie. Bellicoso. It's got the little torpedo yeah, yeah, end yeah. on it. <laughs> and that was where it all started. And I you know, pretty quickly graduated into other cigars from there. But, yeah, that was how I got into it. That's, you know? that's awesome. Just stuck with it. Yeah, and I think one of the cool things that you guys do around here, too, is you carry that same, mm -hmm. like, that. Like, you don't judge. Like, you, you help people when they want to get into a cigar, like, looking yeah. for a cigar. Right. And I think that will be, like, one of the cool things that we're also going to be doing is that Cigar of the Week. I think that's going to be yeah. a great feature, too, because I, I think for people who are getting started or who are interested in smoking cigars or want to take a cigar on the course with them, right. your knowledge, I mean, you just listed off a ton on that Drew Estate. I didn't, right. I didn't yeah. even right. distinguish, like, what's on what's Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and that's that's how we try to be here. Like, like I said, we try to be accessible to everybody. So we've got guys that come in here on the regular that are just, they're blue collar guys, but they like cigars and they come in and they like to just hang out and, you know, just chill with everybody, yeah. smoke cigar. And, but we've got, it runs a gambit between, you know, like just regular guys like me and guys that have re really high profile jobs and they're coming in and they have their own cigar preferences and they've been smoking for as long as they have. And, um, 
we try to just be that equalizer when it comes to that, where everybody feels comfortable here, no yeah. matter like, you know, what your background is cigar wise. Yeah, because yeah. like I said, it can be intimidating. Yeah. Even yeah, here, yeah. like it, it can be intimidating to walk in here um, and feel like you're in a completely different world. But, you know, the way that we run things, it's just like the second you walk in the door and say, hey, how you doing, man? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> you know, we're going to bust your balls a little bit and, and make you feel like you can leave here with a friend. Like you can come in by yourself, know nothing about cigars. And one of our bartenders or our humidor specialists will like hook you up, let you know what's what. It can be your first cigar. And we're gonna show you everything that you need to know, not make you feel stupid about it. And we're gonna guide you through, you know, picking out your first cigar, pairing it with a drink, chilling and seeing what happens next, you know? Yeah, right. And you guys are super friendly. And I know like you are and Greg is like, you always, always say yeah. hi to us. Like whenever hey, we walk don't, in. Yeah. Don't talk too much about yeah. that, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, to go off of that, how many, what's the selection of cigars that you guys offer? As for, and, and also drinks to, Right. those cigars with so obviously we are a full bar as yep. well um and we try we try to be keep consistent with being known for our bourbon selection and our yeah. scotch selection if you look up on the shelf there that's like two-thirds of what we've got up right. there yeah, but we've yeah. got everything else a standard bar would have too um and our cigar selection we have anywhere between like 250 and 350 different lines of cigars in the humidor at any wow. point in time yes. um that's crazy you know, so we've got a bunch of different vendors in there and a bunch of different lines from them. And every now and then things like filter out and come back in. And, yeah, yeah. You know, so we try to keep it interesting in there. Um, and, you know, like we're getting ready to go out to TPE, which is the Total Product Expo out in Vegas next okay. month. That's so awesome. we'll be going out there talking to all the different vendors, um, yeah. maybe picking up some new guys to bring in, obviously replenishing our stock that's in there now from yeah. them. But um you know, it's, it's always, uh, we like to keep it a work in progress in there, just because the second that you start sitting on your laurels, you know, resting on your laurels, it's just like, I, and if I carried every cigar that every person came in here and yeah. asked me for, I have to fill, make this entire place a human order. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Exactly. But, yeah. um, like I said, anywhere between 250, 350 lines in there. Okay. Um, and that's broken up between a really good spread of vendors that we have, you know, uh, anywhere from Nicaraguan to Dominican to Honduran yep. uh, and everywhere in between too. Did you uh, you get any pipes in here? No, not currently, but hey, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe maybe sometime. Work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be All awesome. Right. Yeah. Big, big pipe smoker and stuff. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love that. And then, I mean, for someone that maybe who's listening and mm. wants to really get into a cigar, what, what would you say, what would be a good way, for, what would be a good start in cigar for them? Right. So that's all... That's a super subjective thing, yeah, right? Yeah. But that's why I, I love that when people come in and it's their first cigar because you got to ask them certain questions. Like, for instance, like if you came in and you hadn't smoked a cigar before, yeah. it's like, well, what do you enjoy eating? Right. You know, like, what's your palate like? Because that also depends on, like, what, what area we're going to go to. Like, yeah. For instance, you don't like spicy food. I'm not going to hit you with a traditional super peppery kind of cigar because <laughs> yeah, 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 obviously yeah, yeah. your palate doesn't yeah. like that, right? Yeah. But a lot of people go for some of the flavor-infused cigars from Drew Estate and the Acid line and things like that. It's very approachable, but it just depends on, like, how saucy you're feeling that yeah. day, you know? <laughs> yeah. So um, me, our bartenders, or any of our humidor specialists, they're going to ask you these questions to personalize what that first cigar is for you yeah. so that from the jump you're having an awesome experience and it's just going to be tailor-made to like your preferences and what you're looking to get out of things and then we'll also ask you like well what are you planning on drinking tonight are you celebrating like yeah. what's you know what's going on um and it's that we try to give that attention to detail with every single customer that comes in here so that we can optimize your experience and everybody's having fun like right off the jump because if you're not, then, then what's the, the point? Yeah, you know? exactly, right, right, right. So long story long, super subjective, but you know, we come in and 
a lot of people start off with maybe like an acid blondie yeah. if they're feeling something like that or a fat bottom Betty, something in the flavored category. If you like your sweets and stuff, like yeah. that's right up there. But we've also got some stuff that's in between. Um, you know, there's there's one cigar that's a sober mesa that's just lightly sweetened on it. and okay. But you just, that's it. And you get the natural tobacco flavor of yeah, the other yeah. stuff. And other people will just go with kind of a, uh, you know, a milder cigar to start out with because yeah. you also don't want to bite off more than you can chew and be feeling green in a little <laughs> yeah, while. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah, I started out with an acid and then um, got turned on to these. Um, but yeah, like I, I wasn't really a smoker at the beginning either. No. I, uh, I eased my way into it and I have sort of a sweet tooth, so these ones just right. fit me perfectly right. and yeah. I don't yeah. really <laughs> defer from them, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, what hits right, hits right, man. I always yeah. tell people, the cigar for you is the one that you enjoy, just like your drinks, you know? Right. So right. if you know, if you come in here and you're you're happy with, like, Jim Beam on the rocks and, you know, Fat Bottom Betty, that's awesome. That's yeah. that's yeah. your jam, you know? Yeah, that's your experience. Yeah. You're going to yeah. have a yeah. good time doing yeah. that because that's what you're used to and that's yeah. what you like. And when you have questions about expanding, like, yep. your, you know, your palate and your range and stuff, that's we help out with that, too, you know? Not much more we can ask for as customers. Like yeah, right? seriously, <laughs> honestly, yeah, it's, it's big, yeah. And it, uh, I think you mentioned, but your first cigar was an acid blondie, is that what Acid blondie, blondie, that was my first cigar. And was it? Was, yeah. Then, awesome, what was your first cigar? Uh, it was an acid, it didn't have the, the tip the, on yeah, it. Yeah, the bellicosa, it just, yeah. It was, um, I was looking for a light cigar, um, yeah. and I think it was one of the real thin ones, too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, they make different sizes of those. But, yeah. Yeah. So it was one of the thin ones, and it was good for then. And then I kind of just had like mm. a, a, one of the bigger ones, um, acid line, and then moved on to these. And sometimes I still smoke those, but right. I'm not too much of a smoker. But every once in a while, it's good to uh, yeah, good to fill the cup up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I mean, I'll tell you, there there are more people than not that an acid blondie or something in the acid line was their first cigar. It's yeah. just it's approachable, you know. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like. Especially like growing up, I feel like that was just something simple to get your hands on and yep. uh, right, right. and have to try, you know. And then if it, you know, luckily for me, it stuck, and um, yeah, I, I liked it. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's great. And then, awesome. yeah, I'm sorry, I missed my question here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so with everything being here, the general manager and everything, what's the biggest thing you've learned running the, you know, running the business, being a general manager here at the mm. Cigar Bar and everything? Oh, uh, man, the biggest thing is that just a business like this is kind of like a living, breathing organism, right? So there's always something going on that you have to either address or massage or, you know, like, yeah, yeah. It, so... It's just being able to be flexible and like pivot when something's not going the way that you expected to, and being able to be like relate that to the rest of your staff. Yeah. Um, and obviously not have not expecting them to do anything that you wouldn't do as a leader. You're right. Right. You know. Right, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the biggest stuff that I've learned running the lounge here is that you just got to be able to like be that leader that will jump in and do everything as well yeah. and be able to pivot when it comes to like, okay, well, this thing's not working. So obviously let's take it from this direction or this employee is having an issue with this customer for this reason. And let's like, just figure out why and what, you know, so it's just being flexible is definitely the biggest thing running something like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, cause I have done other jobs in the past where it's kind of uh, like a corporate structure and things like that. I taught secondary education, oh, wow. um, doing computer drafting for a while too. Wow, that's crazy. Um, and that kind of stuff is very like rigid. There's guidelines and you follow them and that's that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So like for a corporate education type yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, I also have a lot of variety in my background. I was a tattoo artist for almost 10 years. Wow. Um, I've been an artist for a long time. And you know, like I said, I, did, I taught computer drafting and I was a computer draftsman for 15 years. So, That's crazy. you know, but you can only like pull little bits of experience from that and apply it to a job like, like this yeah. because 
it's a completely different thing. Like I said, you're dealing with people a lot, and yeah, yeah. that is a that factor is always in flux yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody is so different. different. Yep, yep. You don't know what you're gonna but get. But <laughs> I feel like because we've been able to have a a good relationship with our employees and you know, remain flexible and like I said, always be open to being the person that will like if somebody if there's a mess in the bathroom that needs to be cleaned up, I'm not above cleaning that like I have gone in that bathroom and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. closed it off and cleaned that whole bathroom up before. Right. And I you know, I I'm not the type of person that is gonna expect my staff to do something that I myself wouldn't do. Right. Yeah. That's so awesome. that's, that's yeah, just leading by example is yeah, like a good yeah. thing for this living breathing thing well you're not putting yourself above anyone else or anything right. like that and that's that's yeah. the other thing and like i said before i think you guys like are super like at least from like all the experiences that i've been in here i think you guys are so nice and yeah. like, you're well, good. like I said, we <laughs> we appreciate it yeah right yeah now. and but, you know that's what we we set out for yeah and that, and it's it's awesome to like you know come into a place like this and feel welcome. You know? mm -hmm. It's almost yeah. like, cheers, everyone knows your name. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, pretty, yep. yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. It definitely does set the standard. And, and I mean, it's been an awesome experience to have this in town. Um, yeah. Are you also the GM in Charlestown as yeah. well? Yep. Okay. So you divvy up your time or? Yes. And, you know, right now we're like, we're closed for the winter right yeah. now while we retool a couple things over there. We'll be opening early spring okay. again this year. You know, Charlestown's a very seasonal town yeah, yeah. as far as population goes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So it gets real slow and sleepy in the winter time, yeah, yeah. right? Sure. Yeah. So we kind of we we divide our time between here and Charlestown uh, and our staff between here and Charlestown, so that okay. if people go there from you know say that they're like right on the line of Westerly and Charlestown, they usually come here. If they go there, at least they'll see a familiar face every right. now and then. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, you still tattooing? No, no, no. no. I, that was you know. That's a question, yeah. Get yeah. Some business, yeah. right? <laughs> no, that's a that's a that's a rough job to have. I bet. But I can only imagine. you know, it helps. It helps you be able to like I can dovetail my experience with that into the humidor because in a job like that, you have to deal with people that don't know what they want exactly a lot right. yep. and be able to ask them pertinent questions yeah, yeah. to get that information out of them right. so it helps yeah. out in there a ton gotcha. yeah. was there like for tattooing was there a specific art that you would like to do or like is there anything specific that you would like well so I had an old school mentor who said you learn how to do everything that way you don't turn somebody away when they walk in the door yeah, yeah right um and we had a, he had a really, really hard work ethic uh, and instilled that in us to the point where we made our own tattoo machines and needles and stuff like that. Oh, that's, yeah. that's cool. Wow. That's awesome. um, that is yeah. interesting for sure. So, but with that, uh, I mean, everybody favors a certain style. You're right, right. So uh, mine was American traditional, which a lot of people will know as like uh, Ed Hardy, Sailor Jerry, yeah, that, that kind of stuff. Tough. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But, um, way more into the weeds than than those guys you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that's, that's yeah. awesome and then i guess uh you know a couple more questions and we'll wrap it up but um i wanted to ask you what are you looking forward to i mean you're a sponsor of, of, of the expand right. your brand podcast which is part of the, the golf news ri network mm -hmm. uh i mean what, what are you looking forward to getting on this you know the sponsorship and working with us and everything like that so we're really looking forward to just seeing the different creative ways that we can partner with you guys, whether it's, you know, Golf Cigar of the Week or um, if we can, like, go out and do some, like, on-the-course stuff with you guys where yeah. we're, like, handing out cigars to people, sure. yeah. things like yeah. that. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, you know, and just seeing the different ways that we can come together and uh, make things interesting for Vintage and for you guys. Could we you know? get you out on the course with us? Sometime? Oh, I mean, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe. I mean, it might be like I might be more akin to Bill Murray and Caddyshack, yeah. but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Like the the weird hairy guy scuttling around. That's all right. But yeah. Listen, I'm not. This guy is the best golfer out of all of us. So right. I can't. I can't hit the ball in the ocean if I tried. So yeah. Right. All right. So that would be. I think it's it's super exciting that we we have you guys on board with us and. Um, having you guys as a sponsor and you know being able to film our episodes out of here and yep. Charlestown yeah. I think was going to be a lot of fun and 
I, I love cigars, and I love having a nice cigar when I'm on the course. So I'm, I'm yeah. also very excited for Cigar of the Week, the Golf Cigar of the Week, which is going to be super exciting too. But I think just I love this place. Like I love coming here. It's like yeah. the place that my dad is here now. Like he'll be. <laughs> I mean, he won't be in an episode shot, but he'll be with me. Uh, right. He's like a, a groupie, yep. but like just a groupie that smokes cigars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, like him and I come in here a bunch just to chill mm-hmm. and smoke cigars. And, I, and it's one thing that we're, been, we're able to bond over and like hang out here. So I think that's like another cool aspect of it. So being able to work with you guys, I think, is super exciting. And we're yeah. so happy to like, you know, make this work. And, yeah, do. absolutely. I mean, we're and we're really excited to partner with you guys, too. And also just in hopes that we'll, you know, we can expose more people that didn't necessarily know that there was a lounge here in Westerly or yeah. that a cigar lounge was a thing even yeah. that they can go enjoy. Um, you know, we're looking forward to just like seeing some new faces and stuff and getting getting more people in here to just get to know our bartenders. And, and like I said, this is a really cool place to hang out and yeah. we, try to, we try to keep it that way. Um, and as I said before, we try to have everybody come in here and leave feeling like they've made some friends and they've made like a cool place to come hang out no matter what. Yeah, yeah, so. it's, it's great. It's super exciting and I know we're looking forward to it and we're, we're grateful, very appreciative of you guys working with yeah. us too. So yeah, sure. super, thank super you excited. Yeah, thank you. yeah, yeah, we're, we're grateful to have you guys. Yeah, you I know? think the features that we're going to have and, and be able to bring out um, too, I mean, obviously we're trying to expand Vintage's brand, so people right. understand it, and um, I mean, even even the rest of our guests going going forward. I think um, I think we have a good basis going forward, and I think it's going to be really cool the way we integrate cigars with golf and ultimately the community. Yeah. Gonna be gonna be a lot of fun, and we're, we're really looking forward to it. We're gonna do some episodes down in Charlestown too, when that wow, right, opens absolutely. up as well too. So that'll be really exciting. Maybe catch us outside. Awesome. Yeah. Now, is Charlestown? Yeah. Is it outside? I've never been to that so, location. So Charlestown, we have um, we have indoor outdoor okay. over there. All right. So we have a full bar over there. It's a little bit of a smaller selection. Yep. But we do still have a full bar over there. We have seating for about give or take like 20 people inside okay. and about 20 people outside on okay. the deck as well and it's a really nice view you know you, yeah. you're right really close to the water yeah, yeah. Uh, when the sun's going down over there have you ever been over there when it's sunset there one, yeah, oh yeah. man it's, it's like so nice. chef's yeah. kiss you yeah. know yeah. Like, it's, re- it's <laughs> really awesome. great over there yeah. so yeah it's um I'm definitely looking forward to having you guys over there too because it's like while this is um vintage westerly we sort of have that speakeasy, old school yeah, sort nice. of yeah. um, lounge and club yeah. vibe. Uh, I like to equate Charlestown to it's like the secret clubhouse okay. hangout. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's it's a different vibe. You still know you're in the same spot. Like yeah. it's you can tell it's the same people, but uh, it's just another different vibe over there. Just awesome. being close to the beach and stuff like that. So yeah. definitely looking forward to it. I can't wait to get yeah. it. Yeah, it'd be fun. I think it'd be cool to do some episodes outside mm-hmm. and like you yes. know do some things, but. We're super excited about this, and we greatly appreciate your time and sitting here with us, and obviously yeah, man. Dealing, dealing with my questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I appreciate you having my goofy yeah. bearded self on. Yeah. You know? Well, we can't wait to get you on the course, so we'll have oh, to do some yes. fun, some fun stuff with yeah, you. Yeah, we'll we, see what happens. Yeah, man. Hey, we'll try, we'll drag everyone out with us. So yeah, it'll be, yeah. A, be a good time. And yeah, we'll see who else we can drag out. I got a few people that'll be entertaining that yeah. probably Any pull golf out. Golf experience at all? Bro, no. Mini golf. We were touching. Mini golf. Yeah. Hey, you know I. I am the most average mini golfer <laughs> around, and I am terrible at the driving range. Yeah, so, okay. but it's fun. We could do some mini golf content too. Yeah. We could have yeah. some fun down there, for right? Sure. Do for some sure. fun stuff. But, yeah, but thanks so much for yeah, being uh, being our first guest, and you know, we appreciate yes. it. And obviously, we'll have you on and more, and you know, any events that you guys want to, you know, let let people know. We want to. You know, promote this. Yeah, things. definitely. Yeah, I mean, you know, the only thing that we have coming up right now is we have a customer appreciation raffle that oh. we're doing. Okay. okay. For the end of this month into February, we had a really great year. Everybody hung tough with us through a lot of stuff last year. Um, you know, it, it's like an up and down sort of economy right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and our customers are really they're the best, and they're the reason why we're able to do all the stuff that we do. Yeah. So we've got a raffle right now through mid January where. You know, you buy five Drew Estate or Hoya cigars, get entered into the raffle, and we have got a Drew Estate 25th anniversary suitcase. Oh, wow. That is just, like, packed 
full of like other Drew Estate cigar swag. Really? That's awesome. So yeah. um, we'll be pulling that in mid January, and we just wanted it to be accessible for everybody. So like five cigars, you can mix and match them. Drew or Hoya gets you into there, and then uh, one lucky person walks away with something that everybody here is drooling over yeah, yeah. and wishes that they could have and yeah. just like swipe and take yeah. home, you know? I think I was so. a part of one of those raffles a couple of years ago. You got, yeah. you guys did a Drew Estate. I think we were, it was in the back, um, like eating pizza or sushi or something like that. And yeah. I got like a hat or a Drew Estate a hat out of it. Yeah, so we like, always try to have something cool for everybody yeah, around, yeah. you know? So, yeah. Yeah, well, this has been great yeah. and a, yeah, a man. fantastic interview and we, we appreciate you again, uh, your sponsor, you guys being with us and yeah. Obviously, it's going to be a great partnership working with you guys, and we're super excited about it. I don't know. Yeah, we are too, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah, for being thanks. on the show. Appreciate it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, that was our interview with Brandon, and this, that wraps up the episode. Uh, you can catch every episode on Wednesday. Um, the first thing in the morning will be out around uh, you know 6 a.m., 7 a.m., so whenever yep. you guys can catch those episodes, they'll be on Apple, Spotify, YouTube. Um, whatever you guys are looking for a podcast platform, there will also be on off of go to golfnewsri.com uh, and go to the, the podcast network there. It will be right there as well, too, where you can catch every episode of ours. And as long with Joe's podcast, the Golf News Podcast. And I'm sure Joe will be popping in every once in a while. Come on an episode. It will be a lot of fun to talk with Joe and have him on here. And um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to it. And we appreciate you guys tuning in. Yeah, thank you guys very much. And uh, expand your brand. Perfect.